What's up guys, it's Poir and welcome to a quick guide on Rogue for Diablo 4 from the beta. Giving you a taste of how good Rogue class might look on launch once you gather a bunch of good legendaries. Now in the beta, legendaries are super common, that might change full game, but they really do change your output and even build potential, so hopefully this is a good template to aim for if you're playing the beta and wondering what to use to really get your build rolling. There's a variety of builds you can make with the Rogue, but the funnest and strongest I tried in the beta was with this Shadow Clone Explosion Blade build. A melee focused build that imbues my weapon with darkness, and whenever I inject Twisting Blades, I can Shadow Step or dodge to another crowd, and my blades will return, which if they kill something while Shadow imbued, those enemies will explode, dealing damage to everyone else around them, and with the legendary effect that makes the blade spin around you, they can linger and cause more explosions or gain you more energy, which is your resource for using skills. As you can see in the background, I am just melting stuff. I even got a butcher kill on stream, which was supposed to be the toughest fight in the beta, but I just kind of shredded him at level 25 and tanked pretty well despite not taking too much defensive stuff. Because of inner sight against bosses, you nearly have unlimited energy, so it's just constant DPS. And this is not even min-max. This is kind of like halfway between min-max. I pretty much missed yesterday since I had the start game error for most of the day, but whatever you see in the background or the footage, you can probably get as twice as strong if you really grind for it. But if you enjoyed this build and want to see more D4 builds in the future, min-maxed, then stab that like button and let the build begin. We'll start off with the skill tree since it's the easiest. You want to take Puncture as your basic skill. Basic skills do not cost any energy, but Puncture is the best melee skill as it not only can hit at range, but once you pick up this node, it'll shoot three projectiles out instead, and if you hit the enemy with at least two, you'll inflict vulnerable status on them, which is basically defense down, increasing your damage a ton. Then once you unlock your first core skill, get Twisting Blade. This is the main skill that makes the build your damage skill. You want to max this out by around level 20. This will stick blades into the enemy, and after a second or two, they explode out and return to you. So the game plan is to use Puncture to afflict vulnerability, then spam Twisting Blades, and then use your agility skills to quickly leap to another target, and the blades will return to you, hitting everyone in that path. But once you get this node here, now whenever they return to you, they lower the cooldown of other skills by one second, up to three depending on the number of enemies you hit with the returning blade. So an amazing node for getting good uptime on all your skills. Then you unlock agility skills, and for this you want Shadow Step. This is your main movement skill you use to make use of twisting blades. It also gives you unstoppable, meaning that if you were, say, frozen, you can break out of freeze simply by using a skill, which is cool. And you want the crit node for 8% crit for 3 seconds whenever you use it. Now, you can get dash 2, but due to limited skill slots, I opted out of it. This is great in conjunction with Shadow Step to zip around even more, but Shadow Imbue explosions right now are too good for clear that I felt dash wasn't necessary for early game, but it's up to you. Then we got Subterfuge skills, pretty much only taking Dark Shroud. This gives you damage reduction balls that float around you and are simply for surviving better. I guess you can sub these out too if you don't care about dying. Let's say on Softcore, you can sub this out for Dash, but you can have Dark Shroud up pretty often. And if you take this node, then having two or more equals 10% crit chance, which is really strong for like bosses where you have a bunch pre-prepped and can get that early Zerg DPS on them with Twisting Blades. Shadow Imbue is too good in my opinion. This gives your core skills two shots at dealing shadow damage, which as I explained earlier, makes enemies explode on death. Now two uses does suck, and you do waste those uses on just one Twisting Blade and one Shadow Step. Unfortunately, Shadow Step does eat one of your uses, but because of Twisting's cooldown reduction node, you can get them back fairly fast, though you do need to reapply them often. The trick here you can do is just hold the assign button down to automatically reapply them whenever they're available so you don't have to worry about managing cooldowns as much. And you are going to want this consuming shadows node here, giving you 10 to 30 energy back per explosion. Now I only get the first one here as way back up here, I do get siphoning strikes. This is basically life leech on crits, which I have around 20 to 30% crit chance. And this is just quality of life and keeps my health topped off. And with this, I barely have to use potions because of it. So I do like it. But for soft core, maybe not that worth it early game. So you might want to dump those points into more consuming shadow upgrades for more energy consistency. But either way, the life leech or consume shadow nodes should be upgraded last after level 20. One thing to note, if you do not go Shadow Imbue, then you might need to run Concealment. 
to gain 40 energy per sneak, as spamming Twisting Blades in a group of enemies where you won't proc inner sight as much will eat your energy resources fast, so be careful there. Shadow Imbue or Concealment are your energizers for standard play, so not the bosses. And lastly, during the beta, you can unlock your ultimate skill, which for this build will be Shadow Clone. Arutu Gang, rise. This summons a clone of you that mimics your attacks, so having two Twisting Blades being spammed constantly absolutely melts bosses, killing them in seconds. You can also use this periodically while going through a dungeon at the start of a dungeon to shred stuff as well. Just make sure to have it pre-prepped for a boss, obviously. And if you get this one dagger shrine here, then the game becomes stupid. You clear insanely fast, so super strong skill. Make sure to get the upper nodes as well as the final levels from 23 to 25. So those are the rogue skills. Now quickly for specialization, I believe this is unlocked from doing a story quest for your true potential. Or maybe it's after a certain level, I don't remember. But this is like extra bonus passives. Wall combo points can give you insane damage boost. I think you get like, I don't know, over 100% maybe. Inner Sight with Twisting Blades is bonkers against single targets. This can give you infinite energy for a few seconds, meaning you can spam Twisting Blades, then by the time the effect wears off, your blades will return to you and spin, building up Inner Sight again nearly instantly for unlimited energy again. And with Shadow Clone, obviously this combo is how I am melting stuff, so definitely recommend it over combo points, unless there's better ways to sustain energy, which in the beta there currently is not. But even then, combo points requires the use of basic skills, so the damage gain is offset by using a basic skill versus inner sight where you can just spam twirling infinitely. So I think the DPS kind of evens out, but inner sight's more consistent. Now for gear, the complicated part. The number one legendary aspect you need to hunt for is the twisting blade one. This lets the blades orbit around you, returning for a short period. And if you use shadow step or dash or dodge, Based off the distance from the point of your injection to your current location, they can deal up to like 80% damage at max roll. I have a low roll, and ideally you want to put this aspect on your bow or crossbow, as those effects will be increased by 100%, whereas jewelry is only 50%. So your best legendary effects need to be put on jewelry or your two-handed weapon, and yes, Bonuses from your ranged weapons also affect your total character. The only thing that doesn't is the raw damage stats, obviously, but the smaller bonuses or legendary effects can. Same for vice versa, if you're gonna do a ranged build, your melee stats on your swords can affect your bow DPS. So just keep that in mind. As for the other legendaries, I won't go through all of them since a lot of them are minor, but this effect here is good for survivability, giving you a shield against tougher enemies and bosses. There's also a bubble aspect one that creates a bubble which makes you literally like immune to damage if you stand in it, which is pretty nuts, but I don't have that one. But this one is great, increasing your attack speed whenever you crit with a core skill, so you can spam twisting better, it's just a straight up DPS boost. This one gives you extra crit chance when you proc vulnerability with puncture, your basic skill, and this one's kind of neat. It can summon a bunch of raining arrows with puncture since puncture counts as a marksman skill, something the other melee basic attacks don't, which I have on my crossbow, so it'll deal a ton of damage over the course of a few seconds whenever it procs. It's only 10% chance, so it doesn't proc often, but when it does, it's pretty powerful. This shadow step one I do recommend putting on as it gives you an extra charge to shadow step, which means more big damage from our twirling blades legendary, and you can move around more, which is nice. And yeah, there's a bunch of little minor ones you can take. The other major one you want, though, is this effect. Whenever you attack with a basic skill, your core skills will get a damage boost up to 50%. So you use Puncture, inflict vulnerability, and get like a 45% attack boost for your Twisting Blades to deal big damage afterwards. It's a nutty effect that I'm missing, sad face. But yeah, big damage loss if you don't have that one. And there's also the one where you gain damage based off how much energy you have. But with Inner Sight, it puts you at full when it procs, right? So you can pretty much have that effect constantly whenever Inner Sight is active. And I kill fast already, so I can only imagine having these effects stacked just kills like twice as fast. So you want to include those in the build for sure. And lastly, for random stats in your gear, look for plus two levels to Twirling and Shadow Step. You can enchant and reroll gear at the Occultus in Kiovashad, main town. If you want a different way to get these effects outside of just random drops, you can reroll a stat and keep trying to get a plus two. But you can also try your RNG at the Obols Exchanger to try to get a plus two from gloves for Twisting Blades to get that effect. For other stats, get close range damage, core skill damage, physical damage, 
critical strike chance, and for armors or sockets, uh, I think life on kill would be really comfy. If you go life on kill, you might be able to sub out the life leech skill nodes I mentioned earlier, although you might be more squishy against bosses without that, so up to you. Now, as far as getting legendaries, the best way is the obal exchange or just spam dungeons. You can get like one legendary or more per dungeon you clear, which you clear pretty fast with this build, so should be a solid way to get legendaries if the drop rates aren't changed from now to full game. Of course, also do the world boss. You can get like a bunch of Legos from that easily too. I think I got like nine from my first kill of uh, the, whatever the boss's name is. But yeah, legendaries are pretty easy to get, <clears throat> unlike Wulong, but there's so much bonuses you can get that finding the right ones is still kind of a hunt. But yeah, having lots of fun with Diablo 4 Rogue. I played mostly ranged when I started the game, but once you get Inner Sight, Shadow Clone, and Twisting Blades with some Lego gear, it starts to pop off hard for melee. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy my first build for Diablo. I know it's just a beta build, but I do plan to buy the full game. I like it, so expect many more builds to come in June. And maybe I can crank out a Necro build for the last open beta as an ender. But leave a like if you enjoyed the video and comment down below your thoughts on Rogue. What builds have you run? What improvements could I make for the build? Or just share your thoughts on Diablo 4 beta. Do you guys like it or not? I mean, the queue times and disconnects did suck balls. I couldn't play for like a whole day because of it. But thankfully it seems fixed now so hopefully those playing the open beta next week will have a better time than we early access testers had so yeah if you want more builds and guides for d4 subscribe for more diablo epicness <laughs>